Welcome to a video on the Wyckoff Method, a beginner's guide. What I'm going to do in this video is talk to you about the foundations of the Wyckoff methodology. I'm going to talk to you about the Wyckoff price cycle. I'm going to show you the Wyckoff schematics as well, both for accumulation and distribution structures. And then we're going to look at some real life examples. So we're going to pull up a few charts. We're going to label them. I'm going to take you through that. I'm then going to show you how you can start developing your own Wyckoff strategies to come up with entry criteria. So we're going to look at buying springs, we're going to look at buying sign of strength breakouts, we're going to look at buying backing up reversal breakouts as well. And like I said, this is going to be on real charts, so then you can start applying it to your own trading. And if you stay to the end of the video, there's going to be a discount code I'm going to give you at the end of the video for any of the Wyckoff education courses. So let's get into it and let's start with the foundation of the methodology as I just moved me up here. So the foundation of the methodology is the Wyckoff price cycle and the Wyckoff price cycle is basically all to do with the composite operator. So Richard Wyckoff defined the composite operator of those of most influence, so the smart money. Now does the composite operator exist? No they don't really exist but for us it gives us a kind of context for we can start to think about what the smart money is up to okay those are most influence what are they doing in the stock market and this is where the Wyckoff price cycle comes in and it goes through four phases so the first phase is the accumulation phase so this is where the smart money the composite operator is accumulating their line of stock then what happens when the stock is in strong hands and the composite operator, the CO, has accumulated their line is we have the markup phase. So that's phase number two. And then what happens at the top of the market is the distribution phase. So this is where the smart money has made their money and they're now selling at the top of the market. And then following that is phase four, which is the markdown phase. So this is where just supply is overwhelming demand, there's now no demand for the stocks, okay, and then the price comes crashing back down to earth, and then the cycle just repeats. So this is something you're now gonna start seeing time and time again when you start looking at indexes, ETFs, stocks, Bitcoin, Forex, whatever it is you do, you can apply the Wyckoff methodology to all of those different instruments, commodities as well. The Wyckoff method applies to everything. So the four phases, like I just said, we've got the accumulation phase, markup phase, distribution phase, markdown phase, and then each of these phases is going to have its own schematics as well. So different ways that we can trade it, label it, can do our structural phase analysis. And then Wyckoff also had three laws. So these three laws are really important. So we've got law one is supply and demand. Law two is cause and effect. And law three is effort versus result. So I'm going to come more on to the first and third law, which is supply and demand and effort versus result a bit later in the video. But right now, just think of cause and effect of filling your fuel tank. So the bigger fuel tank that you have, imagine that you've got the same kind of miles per gallon in every single car the bigger fuel tank you have the further you're going to be able to go so the bigger the accumulation structure basically means the more fuel that's being put in the tank so the further you're going to be able to travel for the markup phase so the bigger the bigger the cause, so the bigger the accumulation structure, the bigger the end effects, so the further the price is going to travel so let's now go on and look at our Wyckoff schematics so this is our first schematic for an accumulation structure, as I just get a bit of water. So this is our first accumulation structure, or a schematic basically. So what we've got as we come into phase A, and there's different phases within these schematics. So we've got phase A, phase B, phase C, phase D, and phase E. So phase A in the Wyckoff accumulation schematic is all about the end of a trend. So what we've got is our selling climax, our automatic rally, our secondary test. So that marks the end of the prior downtrend and the automatic rally is the largest rally invariably speaking that you tend to see within the prior downtrend and everything happens on very climactic volume. We then move into phase B. So phase B, both for accumulation distribution structures, is all about building a cause, either building a cause for distribution or building a cause for accumulation. So you can see we've got our up thrust action, we've got a secondary test at the selling climax, and again, we're gonna apply all of this labeling and structural phase analysis in a minute to real price charts. Phase C is all about our testing. 
so you've probably quite commonly seen this but now you'll be aware of it the there's often a spring that undercuts the low of the trading range and quickly rebounds back into the structure this is the composite operator so the smart money just doing that final test to see how much supply is available and we're going to look at some of these and look at a strategy for how you can actually trade springs and enter positions down here which i think is the most optimal in terms of risk versus reward asymmetric upside and a high probability of winning and again a spring has the added advantage of stopping all the weak hands out who would have put their stop losses okay i can actually draw with the uh, trusty magic pen Okay, imagine how many stop losses are going to be set in this region and the spring quickly knocks them out so the weak hands are shaken out and then quickly reverses. Subsequently, you tend to get a test after as well. So you have the spring, you have a test and then the reversal of a test. That's also an optimal place to be entering. You have last points of support within phase D, a sign of strength which is able to overcome all previous resistance. So it's able to overcome the upthrust action it's able to overcome the automatic rally high as well. So that's going to be a sign of strength. We're going to look at how to trade those as well. And then you, and then following the sign of strength in phase D, you tend to have a last point of support slash backing up action. And then we're going to look at how do we trade the backing up. I refer to it as the backing up reversal breakout. So how do you trade the backing up reversal breakout as well? So we're going to look at sign of strength entries. So if I just highlight them, this is what we're going to do a bit later. We're going to look at how do you trade springs, how do you trade sign of strength breakouts, and how do you trade backing up reversal breakouts as well. So schematic number two for accumulation structures. This is slightly different and the reason it's different is in phase C rather than have a spring that undercuts the low of the trading range. Okay, so rather than have something like this that then reverses what we're going to have is a last point of support and subsequent tests as well that don't undercut the low of the trading range. They, they're just really uh, final tests for the composite operator to analyze the available supply that's coming to the market. And then again, sign of strength backing up action as well. We've got our distribution schematics. So again, remember our Wyckoff price cycle. We had the accumulation phase, our markup, and then our down so here was the accumulation which is phase one it lets me do phase one phase two was the markup okay this is going to be the distribution which is phase three and then phase four is the mark down so at the top this is what we're looking at here is going to be our distribution structure so remember these are fractal structures by their nature so they they don't look exactly alike, but they share many repeatable common characteristics, and that is what we are studying with the Wyckoff method, and it's that contextual framework that you're then able to apply the three laws of supply and demand, cause and effect, effort versus result, and your structural phase analysis too, using these schematics, learning the labeling as well. So we've got our buying climax, our automatic reaction, secondary test, a sign of weakness in phase B, an upthrust in phase B, phase C, we've got the final kind of last hurrah so this gets all very very climactic and it's where the co distributes right at the top again they would have also been selling at the buying climax which again if you imagine the volume okay if these are the volume bars okay it tends to get very very climactic in nature okay and these are all things that i touch upon in the Wyckoff introduction course and the other courses as well this is just kind of a beginner's guide to just get you interested in the Wyckoff method get you seeing the price structures when you start looking at it and just start you down the uh, down the rabbit hole basically because it's a very rewarding uh, both financially and intellectually journey so the co is uh, selling at the upthrust action here again it's all weak hands that are buying this rally getting all excited because this is normally when the stock is making front page news it's being covered on the main uh, kind of financial outlets as well look how far it's gone up it's up hundreds of percent over the past few years okay weak hands start getting very excited start buying into the stock but the co who accumulated down in that accumulation base down here okay they're on the other side of the trade they're selling out to them that's kind of the thinking that you want to have Okay, subsequent test in phase C and then last point of supply rallies into sign of weaknesses and major sign of weaknesses as the price then collapsed because the CO has exited their position so there's just not that weight of the demand by retail traders to keep the stock up. You can also have a 
distribution structure to schematic which basically the difference is rather than have an up thrust after distribution you have a last point of supply here that doesn't go above the okay doesn't go above the up thrust as it did in the schematic number one the up thrust after distribution there so again just just slightly different but it comes into the context as well it's looking at the supply and demand balance the effort versus result as well it's knowing the uh, work off price cycle as well where are we in the context of the price cycle so what we're going to do now is look at uh, a stock which i think you pronounce it argon so what we've got here is the Wyckoff price cycle in action. So just note that there's this accumulation base, there's a uh, markup phase, there's then a distribution top, markdown, and then you can see the accumulation phase. So remember, we had the accumulation, we had the markup, we had the distribution at the top of the market, and then we had the markdown, and then we go into the accumulation. And remember, there's going to be reaccumulation structures that form within the context of this prior uptrend. Okay, that's where you're going to get your smaller reaccumulation structures, your volatility contraction patterns. I refer to them as Wyckoff wave patterns because we're overlaying the whole of the Wyckoff method as well. We're looking at the nuances of supply and demand, cause and effect, effort versus result, where are we in the Wyckoff price cycle, etc., etc. So remember, this would be phase one, phase two phase three, phase four, and back to phase one. So if we now just clear all that and start doing our structural phase analysis, I'm not gonna go too far into the weeds and look at supply and demand, effort versus result, P and F, so point and figure analysis as well. I'm just gonna keep this quite basic. So what we can see at the top of the market here is our buying climax. Note the climactic run up and then the sudden uh, drop here. So this is going to be a reaccumulation structure. So the labeling is going to be slightly different. But same principles, we have a change of character. So when we experience a change of character, such as this, which is often the largest decline that we see within the context of the prior uptrend, markets move in one or two ways. They move in trending environments or they move in non-trending environments. So it's our job to analyze, and this is where we use the Wyckoff method as well, is to analyze when the stock has moved from a trending to a non-trending and back from a non-trending to a trending environment. And we're gonna to look to take advantage of these opportunities that continually and repeatedly present themselves. So we've got a change of character from the buying climax into, we're gonna label this as a shakeout and then a secondary test. So that's gonna mark the end of phase A. Remember phase A is all about the end of a trend. So buying climax, shakeout, secondary test, then we move into phase B. So what next cap captures your eye as you're looking at this structure? Well, for me, it's going to be these kind of up thrust looking things here uh, where the price tries to commit above the buying climax and both times here fail. So we're going to label these as up thrust and they might well turn out to be up thrust actions because they have the same common characteristics of an up thrust but remember this is going to be a reaccumulation structure so we're going to label it as an up thrust action now what next captures your eye when you look at this well next thing that captures my eye is the shakeout level down here of around $28.62 and we can see that price breaks that support level okay here once and then a subsequent test so what does this remind you of from our Wyckoff accumulation schematics well it looks very similar to a spring type action so that's going to be our phase C in here Everything's in between is going to be phase B. That's a very easy way to identify it. Remember, try and identify the buying climax, the change of character. So you're going from the trending to the non-trending. Try and identify your phase C spring and test action. Then everything in between phase C and phase A is just going to be phase B. So we've got a spring in here and then a subsequent test in here as well. And then we move into phase D. So what next captures your eye in here? Well, we've got a sign of strength here because price is able to overcome previous uh, levels of resistance, including the buying climax and the up thrust actions. So that's gonna be our sign of strength. And then what follows is our backing up action. Okay, and that's gonna be where the backing up reversal action comes into play and on the next slide I'm going to show you some of my favorite entries using the Wyckoff method so that's our sign of strength our backing up action so that's going to be our phase D and then what you can see is the smaller reaccumulation structures 
as we progress up here. And there's different ways to be trading these uh, reaccumulation structures. Again, walk off wave patterns, uh, reaccumulation structures. So again, looking for the springs, looking for the sign of strength, looking for the backing up reversal breakouts in these smaller structures. Again, remember they're fractal in nature, so they repeat. And it's our job to notice them, spot them, and then look to take advantage of them and enter optimal trades. So that's going to be our kind of basis of our accumulation structure. Remember in courses and in the Wyckoff watch list, I go into this in much greater detail and there's going to be a discount code at the end of this video. So as we progress, we know that this was phase one. So remember this was phase one. This is phase two and now we're coming into phase three. So this is going to be our distribution structure. So just notice from here down to here, and again, you can have sloping uh, accumulation and distribution structures as well. It's not all really easy and just nice and horizontal, such as this accumulation structure. Again, you need to think in a bit of a non-linear dynamic fashion here. So what we've got as the from our top of the market, and remember, look how climactic this whole run is. Here, okay, it's very climactic. Things do not go up in a straight line forever so the composite operator was accumulating in here okay and then as this rally progresses they're then selling out into the strength into the retail traders who see that the price is up hundreds of percent or so or up a lot 50 percent 40 percent and then they're distributing on the way up here okay in the distribution structure and then you can see price collapses so what we would have at the top of the market is our buying climax okay our ar and our secondary test that would mark the end of our phase A here. So it marks the end of the uptrend. And note how between the buying climax and the AR, so in this region here, acts as our change of character. So again, we're now moving from the trending environment, which was the uptrend here, to the non-trending environment. So we're expecting some form of structure to develop. And it's then our job to decipher whether that's going to be an accumulation or distribution structure. So what next captures our eye? Well, we have another uh, kind of test here at the AR level, but it's at a lower level. So we would label that as a sign of weakness. Okay, in there, we then have this upthrust attempt here where price fails to overcome the buying climax. So we'd be labeling that as an upthrust. We then come down and have another sign of weakness. Price then attempts to rally. Uh, up here and then you can see this is the last kind of hurrah okay price isn't e even able to overcome the upthrust action so we'd be labeling this as an upthrust after distribution or an lpsy last point of supply and then you can see that price just comes crashing down there's another lpsy in there so then this would be our major sign of weakness and that would be our phase c everything in between is phase b phase D. So hopefully this is making a little bit of sense. Again, I go into much more detail in my courses. This is just kind of a beginner's guide to get you really thinking about this. And then we go into a, another accumulation structure. So remember, this would now be phase four and then back into phase one accumulation. So let's start looking at a chart I've got marked up. I'm going to come on to that at the end of the video. I don't know why that got there. So this is AIZ is the ticker and this is a stock I just picked out from the Wyckoff watch list. So what you can see is our labeling again. So you can start to see the fractal nature and how these structures structures repeat. So we've got our phase A, we've got our buying climax, shakeout, secondary test. We've got our secondary test in phase B. We've got our several up for us here. We've then got our spring, our subsequent test. We've got our sign of strength breakout bar entry, our backing up reversal breakout bar entry as well. And then what you can see is a smaller reaccumulation structure forming up here as well. And then you can note the spring action where I've labeled here. Okay, so because they're fractal in nature, these structures, okay, they repeat on a smaller scale. So what's happening in here, we could go and label this, but I've just pointed to the phase C spring action, okay, which again happens in the larger structure. So it's having strategies in place that enables you to take advantage of these opportunities. So the three strategies I've developed using the Wyckoff method as my uh, kind of find the foundation is the pivot spring strategy entry, which you can see how well that entry 
would have got you in again all the criteria and rules for these are listed in the work off watch list there's a link in the description so there's the pivot spring strategy entry there's the sign of strength breakout entry in here and there's the backing up reversal entry as well so this is how i look to trade using the wyckoff method these for me are the most optimal entry points so that's how i look to trade so let's look at a few more examples just to finish off so what we've got this is uh noodles company so again you can just see how these structures build bases and then they move from the trending to the non-trending environment you can see that i would have been entering in here and in here I wouldn't have had my pivot spring strategy entry, but I would have had my sign of strength breakout entry, and I would have also had my backing up reversal breakout entry. And then in here, okay, this is our major backing up reversal breakout bar entry as well. So you can start to see how we can use the methodology to time optimal entry point. And again, we're looking at to analyze and as we get better at analyzing using the Wyckoff method, your skills are going to improve your trading results are also going to improve but again you need to have that strategy you need to have that discipline to execute on your process but the great thing about the Wyckoff method is because it's so repeatable in nature and you're conducting your analysis your analysis will continue to get better with time so you can then better identify sign of strength as opposed to up thrust after distributions understanding where the Wyckoff price cycle is understanding what the composite operator has done too in terms of looking at the effort versus result the supply and demand what's happening okay the volume price analysis all of that's going to come in but again that's when you start getting to more intermediate and advanced stages the crucial thing to do at the beginning is really just to spot the Wyckoff price cycle and just start analyzing the structures labeling conducting your structural phase analysis as well and then start digging deeper into the um, into the rabbit hole really so you can see the entries that we would have had in noodles company here if we progress this is then coca-cola and this is the bottom of the financial crash so this is then looking at the accumulation structure at the bottom of the financial crash. You can see the dates down here. Okay, October 2008, March 2009. You can see the spring. You can see the test as well. So again, these structures are fractal. They just keep on repeating. And it's our job to be able to take advantage and know what the composite operator is up to. So you can see the entry points that we would have had here. Okay, maybe would have been buying there buying there buying there so these are just the optimal entries okay sign of strength breakout bar okay we could have been thinking that that was the backing up reversal breakout bar we have another opportunity to enter on a backing up reversal breakout bar and in here this is a major backing up reversal breakout bar as well so remember we're going from the trending to the non-trending okay note how volatility okay is decreasing probably going into a bit too much depth here now okay supply is also decreasing the quick reversal so just note from the first half to the second half of the structure in here how price volatility is decreased that suggests absorption of the supply volatility is decreasing supply is decreasing helps back up that thesis of the accumulation structure that's unfolding we can then see up here Remember, if we were to look at just this in isolation, this is also a re-accumulation structure. So you could see the final phase C, that would be our spring in there. So remember, these structures are repeating on different time frames and in different periods as well. So you have structures form within structures. Okay, that's the fractal nature of them. So even though we're in the context of the larger phase D accumulation structure, we've actually got a smaller re-accumulation structure forming in here and again you can then look to take advantage of those using the pivot spring strategy so you would have had an entry in there you can look for sign strength breakout bars as well you can look for backing up reversal breakout bars as well these are all the optimal methods so hopefully that's kind of sparked your interest in the Wyckoff method if I go to this screen here remember if you want to go and check out some of the courses that I've got if you use the code learn Wyckoff that's going to give you 10% off any courses even if they're already discounted so just go and visit the wyckoffeducation.com website and if you want to check out the Wyckoff watch list from £20 a month there's a link in the description and that basically gives you all of my best stock ideas for the UK and US so thanks for getting to the end of this video and I hope you have a fruitful journey with the Wyckoff methodology.